My people, my people, my dear friend people, now how on a day? I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending from where you're listening to the sound of my voice. This is the Biafra Superstars Media and I'm holding it down. I say may God bless Biafra and may God bless His Excellency Oyendo Mazenam the Kano. May God bless, may God bless, may God bless His Excellency, the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic of Minton Exile, His Excellency ESN Ekba Simon and Joku. For the job Simon is doing, Simon, I want to say we thank you. We appreciate you. We love you because we know in your hands, Biafra is coming. In your hands, Biafra is safe. And in your hands, when Biafra comes, the people of Biafra will rejoice. Today, this afternoon, tonight, my fellow Biafrans, I want to first of all encourage and appreciate and also congratulate the new Prime Minister of the British Government, I'm talking about Prime Minister Keir Starmer. As you all saw the result, he won with a resounding landslide in the just concluded elections. Today, I want to call upon Prime Minister Keir Starmer. I want him to understand that we, the Biafrans, a country that was juxtaposed by the British government, in 1914 during the so-called amalgamation of all the different regions to make it one country called nigeria i want the prime minister to know that since 1914 till this day we the beer france we've been clamoring for our freedom we've been treated unfairly from by the other tribes and we are saying going forward it's a time for us to regain our freedom Today, I want to implore on the Prime Minister, K. Stammer, to understand that the way he had the right to become Prime Minister, the way he had a majority of the people of Britain, the UK, they had the freedom to vote for him, the way he had the right to vote. And also in this statement, you will hear him say he believes in the four nations standing together. If Britain can claim they have four nations, which is Wales, England, Scotland, and Northern Ireland, the same structure they have, the same independence they have to choose, is the same information where the Biafrans are seeking. Is the same freedom we are asking for. So today, I want us all to implore and listen to the first speech of the new Prime Minister of Britain. And afterwards, we shall hear from our Prime Minister of Biafra, His Excellency Mazi Ekba Simon and Joku. Afterwards, I will come back to make some statements because today I want to declare that the vision that Kestama have for Britain is similar to the vision of our Prime Minister. If he desires a free and liberated Britain with a vibrant economy, independent, where people can seek a better way of life and seek happiness. The same is what we, the Biafrans, we've been asking for and we've been seeking. Also, if Britain could have a, a referendum to break away from Europe, the EU, similar, we, the Biafrans, we are saying the time is ripe for us to break away from Nigeria. We've been seeking this referendum for a long time, which we have not gotten. But now, with the digital world, with the advent of the digital age, we were able to conduct our referendum, which we are still conducting. And so far, over 4 million people have voted. So today, I want to speak on this and also seek a new relationship between Britain and Biafra. I am calling this 
a new relationship between Britain and Biafra is possible. It is time to bury the hatchet. It is time for Britain to step forward. And I hope the Prime Minister of Britain, Prime Minister Keir Starmer, will be able at this time to carefully consider our plight, to carefully consider our request, and to work hand in hand with our Prime Minister, the Biafra Republic government in exile. So sit back, relax, listen to the first statement, the first speech given by the new Prime Minister of Britain, and afterwards we shall hear from our Prime Minister, Mazi Ekma, Simon and Joko. Thank you. Good afternoon. I have just returned from Buckingham Palace, where I accepted an invitation from His Majesty the King to form the next government of this great nation. I want to thank the outgoing Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. His achievement as the first British Asian Prime Minister of our country, the extra effort that that will have required should not be underestimated by anyone. And we pay tribute to that today. And we also recognise the dedication and hard work he brought to his leadership. But now our country has voted decisively for change, for national renewal and a return of politics to public service. When the gap between the sacrifices made by people and the service they receive from politicians grows this big, it leads to a weariness in the heart of a nation, a draining away of the hope, the spirit, the belief in a better future, that we need to move forward together. Now, this wound, this lack of trust, can only be healed by actions, not words. I know that. But we can make a start today with the simple acknowledgement that public service is a privilege and that your government should treat every single person in this country with respect. If you voted Labour yesterday, we will carry the responsibility of your trust as we rebuild our country. But whether you voted Labour or not, in fact, especially if you did not, I say to you directly, my government will serve you. Politics can be a force for good. We will show that. We've changed the Labour Party returned it to service and that is how we will govern country first party second yet if i'm honest service is merely a precondition of hope and it is surely clear to everyone that our country needs a bigger reset a rediscovery of who we are because no matter how fierce the storms of history one of the great strengths of this nation has always been our ability to navigate a way to calmer waters. And yet this depends upon politicians, particularly those who stand for stability and moderation, as I do. Recognising when we must change course, for too long now we've turned a blind eye as millions slid into greater insecurity. Nurses, builders, drivers, carers, people doing the right thing, working harder every day. Recognised at moments like this before, yet as soon as the cameras stop rolling, their lives are ignored. I want to say very clearly to those people, not this time. Changing a country is not like flicking a switch, 
The world is now a more volatile place. This will take a while. But have no doubt that the work of change begins immediately. Have no doubt that we will rebuild Britain with wealth created in every community. Our NHS back on its feet facing the future. Secure borders, safer streets, everyone treated with dignity and respect at work. The opportunity of clean British power cutting your energy bills for good. And brick by brick, we will rebuild the infrastructure of opportunity. The world-class schools and colleges, the affordable homes that I know are the ingredients of hope for working people. The security that working-class families like mine can build their lives around. Because if I asked you now whether you believe that Britain will be better for your children, I know too many of you would say no. And so my government will fight every day until you believe again. From now on, you have a government unburdened by doctrine guided only by the determination to serve your interest, to defy, quietly, those who have written our country off. You have given us a clear mandate, and we will use it to deliver change, to restore service and respect to politics, end the era of noisy performance, tread more lightly on your lives, and unite our country. Four nations, standing together again, facing down, as we have so often in our past, the challenges of an insecure world, committed to a calm and patient rebuilding. So, with respect and humility, I invite you all to join this government of service in the mission of national renewal. Our work is urgent, and we begin it today. Thank you very much. In Biafra, Africa died, and in Biafra, Africa will rise. Today, there are movements all over Africa to liberate Africa from neocolonialism. Biafra will not be exceptional. In 2011, Biafra became a charter member of the Organization of Imagining African State. And in December 2015, the Organization of the Imagining African State called on the Nigeria government to hold a referendum on Biafra self-determination within 90 days, including the option of the total independent as the Republic of Biafra, a transitional phase of not more than 180 days. My fellow Biafrans, it may surprise a lot of people to know that this actually happened. Nigeria ignored it. In 2016, the Organization for Imagining African State repeated the call for referendum as the sponsor of the All Biafran Conference of Accra, which took place in 2016. My fellow Biafrans, in October of 2020, the Organization of Emerging African States repeated its demand for referendum on Biafra self-determination to the government of Nigeria. All these calls were ruthlessly ignored by the Nigeria state. The Organization for Imagining African State, after deliberation, has endorsed the Biafra Republic government in exile self-referendum on Biafra for many, many reasons. And one of those reasons, or some of those reasons, are as follows. Nigeria refused to administer or permit a third party to conduct Biafra referendum. The organization also noted that the African Charter of Human and People's Rights guarantees the right to self-determination of everyone, including Biafra people. There you have it. Thank you, our Prime Minister, His Excellency Mazi Ekbar Simon and Joko, for the great submission. And also, I wish to implore the new PM of Britain, Keir Starmer, to please look into this, reconsider for all that is good, 
Because the same vision you have for Britain is the same vision our Prime Minister has for Biafra. The same way you want your people to live in happiness. The same way you want a striving economy. The same way you believe in the rule of law where everyone is equal under the law. That's the same way with the Biafrans. We are clamoring for our freedom. What Britain did in Africa was unjust during the days of slavery and colonization. What Britain did, naming African tribes and making them countries, bringing together nations and making them countries, all in search for the resources, what they call the Commonwealth and the Commonwealth of Nations and the rest of them. That was a grave mistake from Britain. And I want to believe that Prime Minister Keir Starmer will look into this and correct the wrong. The days of seeing black people as one, those days are gone. The days of assuming that a black man is the same, whichever continent, country or tribe or region you find them, that's the ignorance and mistakes made by Britain during the slavery and colonization of Africa. So today we are calling for Britain to repent from this grave mistake. If you claim slavery is over, if you claim the days of colonization is gone, then we want the handiworks of Britain in creating that contraption called Nigeria to be repelled. Today, it lies on your desk. This clarion call for justice lies on your desk. As the new Prime Minister of Britain, I implore you to do what is right. We, the Biafrans, we are demanding freedom from Nigeria. We now have a government. We now have a cabinet. And we now have our own Prime Minister. So today we are calling upon you to rethink and reconsider for all that is good. What you want for the people of Britain is what we want for Biafra. If you think equality, good health, prosperity is something good for the people of Britain, I want you to look back and see what your country did in a region in Africa where a white man known as Lord Lugat came and for the love of the weather, he chose to make them one country. He disregarded the culture, their way of life, and all that. So today, I want you to also reconsider all these kind of situations and make sure you look into correcting the wrongs of Britain. Prime Minister Keir Starmer, it now falls on your desk. Prime Minister Keir Starmer, it's now upon you, being the new Prime Minister, to do what's right and make sure the people of Biafra get their freedom. Prime Minister Keir Starmer, it is for you to go back to the annals of history. Go back to the documents. Go back to the records and correct the wrongs that was done by Britain. Because we in Nigeria, we are not one people. Those you call Nigeria, we are a different people. Different tribes, different nationalities, different people from different ethnic backgrounds, people with different culture, people with different spirituality, People with a different way of life. But Britain came to Africa and made us one. You disregarded who we are. You disregarded our dignity. And our right to be heard. So today I want to call upon you. The new Prime Minister of Britain. To please rethink and reconsider for all that is good. Before I wrap this one up, I want you to know 
I want to bring to your desk to your notice that a black British was kidnapped by the Nigerian government in the month of June 2021 while he was on holiday in Kenya. I repeat, a black British man was kidnapped by the Nigerian government while he was on holiday in Kenya. That man's name is Mazi Nambekano. He's also our leader. And he's someone that we want you to look into towards regaining his freedom. I've not heard from the media of Britain news about this man that was kidnapped. Why is that? Is it because he's a black man? He is still a British. And I expect you, being the new prime minister, to make sure all lives, all British lives matters. And I hope you will look into the freedom of this man from the clutches of the Nigerian government. Lastly, before I go, I want to once again congratulate you in this great feast that you had being the new British Prime Minister. Your victory was a landslide and I hope you will use the goodness of the people voting for you to make sure your policies, your actions, especially your foreign policies, reflect the real British people. Because the last time I checked, when we suffered with Kwashoko during the Biafran War of 1967 to 1970, it was when the British people saw those videos, those pictures of children dying of Kwashoko, that they turned it in new leaf. And they asked the then Prime Minister of Britain to stop the war. So today, I want to call upon you to look at the face of the 7 million children killed during the Biafran War, to rethink and reconsider for all that is good. This is the year the Biafrans are seeking their freedom from Nigeria. This is the year we are calling out for our own referendum. This is the year on the 2nd of December that we wish to seek for the total freedom and break away from Nigeria. So Prime Minister Kestama, this one will fall on your desk in due course. And I hope when it gets to you, you should remember your vision for Britain is similar to the vision for the Biafran people. From me, from here, for now, I want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I remain yours truly, Biafra, superstars, media, God bless you. Yeah, check me out. Superstars Media. Oh, Lord Lugan. Let me turn Lord Lugan. And it's why Flora Show. 914 Amalgamation is what we dying for. Three nations to one nation. Ever since annihilation, nepotism is nonsense. You and you, clap your hand, clap your hands. Biafra gonna call, clap your hand, clap your hands. Uh, Biafra, Odudua, we're free now. Freedom is gonna come, we're free now. Yeah. Superstars Media. Freedom's gonna come. Yeah. Yeah, freedom's gonna come. I'm fighting for Biafra, fighting for Odudua. Yeah, yeah, freedom's gonna come. And I'm the Kano, who's the leader. Yeah, we fight for liberation of the people, of the nation. Yeah, yeah, freedom's gonna come. Freedom's gonna come.